everybody welcome to the channel my name is Scott Schaefer and today I'm out here at the Aurora Yard and I'm building myself a log railroad okay so the reason I decided to build what I call the log railroad is because I needed to get my logs out of this field I had all my logs out in the field where they'd be out of the way of the city forestry vehicles but it turns out the field is a low point in the immediate area which means every time it snows or rains it turns into a swamp when dry, it seemed like it was really solid ground, but when saturated with water, the tractor was sinking up to its axles, which made it hard to move logs around. Well, impossible. It's also bad for the logs because they absorb moisture from the ground and they rot. So it's always best to keep your logs up off the ground. To do this, I used my Norwood bandsaw mill to cut eight by eight timbers out of large cottonwood logs. I happen to have a lot of cottonwood, but little demand for it, so this was a perfect use for it. Most of the logs were big enough that I could get four of these timbers from each log. I left the lengths at whatever length the logs were because length uniformity is unnecessary and I wanted to maximize my linear foot yield. I ended up getting 31 8x8 timbers so far which will get me off to a great start. Originally I was hoping to be able to drive between the timbers with the tractor to load the railroad with logs but most of the logs aren't longer than the tractor is wide. So then I tried putting the timbers close enough together that I could straddle them with the tractor, but they're just barely too big and the underbelly of the tractor was pushing them around as I passed over them. So that didn't work. Then I figured out I could pick up the logs by one end and drive up next to the railroad and set the logs down that way. With the timbers set three feet apart, it's really easy to maneuver the logs by hand once they're on the railroad. Using a cant hook, I can roll them and using the timbers as a teeter point, I can actually lift one end of the log to turn it left or right. I definitely wouldn't be able to lift one end of an 800 pound log if it were laying on the ground. So now, as I pull logs from the railroad later on, all I have to do is just roll the rest of the logs down the line to keep them in numerical order as I add new logs at the end of the row. You may be wondering what my plan is with these logs. Well. Since I'm not allowed to have customers come out to the city yard and I don't have a storefront, my customers can shop through these logs on my website. I've numbered each log and I have pictures of all of them on the website. Below the pictures, I have descriptions of each log, including length, diameter, species, estimated board foot, and special characterizations if applicable. My customers simply find a log they like and send me a cut list of what they'd like from that log. They must buy the entire log, but at 85 cents a board foot plus a $20 delivery charge, the value they receive is so good, the extra material is more of a bonus than a burden, and some of the customers sell the portion they don't need to cover the entire cost of the original order. Of course, drying and sanding the wood is up to the customer, but again, the savings are so good my customers are willing to put in the extra effort. My goal here in Aurora is to create a formula that can be transferred to other municipalities in the area and perhaps be taught to viewers like you all over the world who can use this formula to save and utilize their own local urban forest products. So there will be many more videos on this topic and if you'd like to start looking into sawmills, NorwoodSawmills.com is a great place to start because they have a lot of easy to use sawmills that fall into a wide range of budgets and as you grow your business, you can upgrade your mill to keep up with your growing workload. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in the next video.